Howdy fellas, this is B. Junior from B. Junior's Movie Cave on the Endurance Productions YouTube channel. I'm gonna sit here and talk to you and do a little recap today on the good time that was Scarefest. That's right guys, I went to Scarefest 2011 uh, up in Lexington, Kentucky. Spent a little time up there walking around, meeting uh, some celebrity guests, checking out all the vendors, all the sites up there, all kinds of stuff to get into. Uh, it's also a paranormal convention. You, if you're into the ghost hunting thing, there's plenty of that stuff there if that's your thing. Um, I just had a really great time overall, guys. i got to say, very, very organized show. Um, all the booths at, for the celebrity guests and the vendors were all about the same size. They gave you this neat uh, Scarefest program, which is about a 30-pager and tells you uh, bios and uh, run down everybody that's there as far as celebrity guests are concerned. It gives you a schedule so you know when all the Q&As are, uh, so you don't miss anything. You know where everything is at. Everything's number coded. Very, very classy. I mean, very. they knew what they were doing. They put on a really great show. Um, any show that's got an event program, that detailed and did a pretty good job on. Uh, I think this is going to be the show that I think in years to come, is going to be kind of my standby show, the one I want to go back to and spend my ticket money on. Uh, for the sheer fact that they had a lot of great guests, a lot of a ton of things to do, and it was all in one location. It wasn't separated and put out in different places or anything like that. One big giant convention hall full of horror goodness, and it was really cool. Um, this year's theme was a tribute to 80s horror. They had quite a few 80s guests there that I enjoyed meeting, and we'll get into that in a moment. Um, more importantly, too, uh, I met a lot, of, a ton of great YouTubers there. I mean, just to name a few off my head, I got to see Pizzell again, Ryan 1988, uh, Wes Vance, and uh, Uncle Bill, or the Creepy Kentucky and Uncle Bill from uh, not only from YouTube but from Dead Pit Radio Show. T-shirt Joe was there from FastCustomShirts.com. Uh, always got to plug that guy because he's got some great quality T-shirts. I bought a couple. I'll show you here in a minute. Um, I got I bumped into Doug Lander. He was there. Um, I've met a new YouTuber or a YouTuber I haven't met before. He goes by the uh, the uh, YouTube handle Havoc. He's on the Dead Brothers channel. Um, Scott Slasher World, Movie John 75. Um, the list just goes on and on and on. I mean, I could go on all day about all the YouTubers I've bumped into. And if I don't remember your names right off the top of my head, I apologize. But uh, check out the photos. All my photos from Scarefest, still, still shots and everything with celebrities and whatnot, will be on the B Juniors Movie Cave Facebook page and under the photos section. So link from my YouTube channel over to that page and uh, you'll be able to check out all the photos I took while I was there and I filmed quite a bit this trip too so in the next couple videos to come after this recap video you're gonna see uh, not only a tour of Celebrity Row there but a tour of Scarefest itself to give you a, a feel of what goes on at the horror convention it's just really fun laid-back atmosphere you could really walk around in this one. It wasn't so busy that you just couldn't, you know, you weren't crammed into like an elevator type situation. And uh, you really felt like you could breathe and make time for everything. There was a little bit of everything to do. A lot of Q&As going on. I went to two Q&As this time. I went to the Sleepaway Camp Q&A. Um, and also went to the Return of the Living Dead Q&A on Friday night. Um, so it really... It really was a great time. I really, I really could say I got my money's worth. The money stretched further this show, and I'll get into that in probably a subsequent video later on on pricing. There's a lot of price fluctuation, not only with uh, celebrities but some dealers as well, that were to my advantage on Friday, but then they went up on Saturday. So I'm glad I got the majority of my stuff on Friday evening, and left the fun stuff to Saturday and kind of hanging out for Saturday. So, but uh, let's get into. Let's just kind of do the. Uh, do the haul for right now and uh, I'll show you all the autographs I got and the swag that I got or the stuff that I bought for souvenirs sake and just remember I got real good luck on Friday my money just stretched further so it may look like I got a lot and I spent a whole lot I really didn't compared to Friday Night Film Fest Friday Night I got a bunch of autographs on one big poster back there and the money just didn't stretch as far I, I don't know why maybe it was just because I spent more on gas or whatever I don't know but anyway let's get into it here uh, save my bracelets. It's kind of a weird thing. I always save my movie tickets and my bracelets if I go to concerts or whatever. There's the Scare Fist uh, Friday and Saturday. Uh, entry bracelets. I got some convention DVDs. I usually don't advocate that, uh, but these were some, a couple of them I saw at the last show I went to Friday night. 
and I've been kicking myself in the rump because I didn't get them, and I don't see them coming out on DVD anytime soon because one is tied up for music rights, and another one is just, I don't know, I think the director's ashamed of it or something, I don't know, and another one I really wanted to get, so let's dive right in. Legend of Billie Jean, uh, Helen Slater, Christian Slater, uh, 1985, 80s classic, just got it, I had to have it. Transfer on this is actually pretty good, it's in widescreen, but no special features, of course. Here's a John Frankenheimer movie, uh, action movie from yesteryear, The Challenge, uh, with Scott Glenn, and uh, it's got a lot of good samurai uh, sword fights and stuff in it, action, machine guns and stuff, and uh, a little over long, but it's just a really good movie from yesteryear that you just cannot find anywhere except for on VHS if you get lucky, so anyway, The Challenge. It is a VHS transfer, full screen. Uh, this is, and you're saying, why didn't you get any horror DVDs? Went to a horror convention. Well, I had to get one. I picked up one that everybody's been saying, you need to get this one. You need to get it forever. I don't know why I've waited so long to get this one, guys. Because I watched it uh, just yesterday, and it's off the chain insane. It's great. I, I, I found a new one that I love. It's called Nightmare, or uh, AKA Nightmare in a Damaged Brain, or Nightmares in a Damaged Brain. This is the uncut widescreen version of the film. The picture quality on this isn't really great. I don't know if it's just a, a an un -remastered, a non remastered DVD transfer. It's what it looks like. So it's got that old grind, gritty grindhouse look to it. But uh, I really enjoyed this film. It's got great practical effects from year 1982, I believe it is. Uh, just a really wild movie. I'll do a review on it probably at Halloween time. We'll get into October because this is one of my new favorites. I think so. Anyway, Nightmare and a Damaged Brain. Had to get that one. That's it for the DVDs. And as I said, I stopped by the Dead Pit table. It's like a pilgrimage. You have to stop by and see CK and Uncle Bill. Uh, just good fellas. Um, basically, I got one of their... They had a few of these. They didn't have a whole lot of these. I grabbed a Pitomania shirt. Pitomania's running wild, brother, in the man cave, or in the movie cave. I got their ad on the back. Uh, raw and uncensored every Friday. Got the little zombie guys on top of it. I, don't know, I like green shirts too, and I just, I don't know, they had my size large. I grabbed a Pitomania shirt. Had to get it. Can't wait to sport it. Stopped by a t shirt Joe's right next door to uh, Dead Pit. Dropped, to some, dropped uh, some coin on Joe's table because he's, for the money and the selection involved, he only charges 10 per shirt at a convention. And for the quality, I've gotten shirts from t shirt Joe like a year and a half ago. They've never faded or anything of that, never shrunk up or anything. They're just great shirts. They'll give you special powers, too, if you wear them long enough. No, I'm just kidding, just kidding. But uh, thanks, T-Shirt Joe. I, I missed out on this one last show at Friday Night. This is the Return of the Living Dead shirt. It's got the neon green uh, logo there from the one sheet. I don't know. I just love this shirt. I'm going to wear it on Halloween for sure. So, Return of the Living Dead T-Shirt. I picked up this one because he said it was the last one he had. And a large, or actually it's the last one he had on his table. This is one of his Guilty Pleasure TV shows I used to love. It's uh, Tales from the Dark Side. It's actually, it looks like a screenshot from the, uh, the intro to the show where it goes to the negative. Anyway, Tales from the Dark Side, the Romero TV show from yesteryear. Love that one. Let's get into some autographs here, guys. Let me take a little sip of water. I don't want to lose my voice on this video. You wouldn't want that, would you? Ah, good one, good one. Here we go, guys. I've got just about everything framed up that I'm going to be framing up for the Man Cave display. One of which I didn't frame because I just couldn't, I don't know. I met the fella, his name was Zach Galligan. Uh, you know him from Gremlins 1 and 2, Waxwork 1 and 2, and many other parts he's played in. Um, I got his autograph, it says to Barry, Zach Galligan. It's a... Uh, picture print from the movie Gremlins. I figured it'd be safe to just go ahead and get one from Gremlins. He had a lot of screenshots like this on 8.5 eight and eight and by 11 photo paper. They, they just didn't look like professional prints after I sat and stared at this one long enough. It just, the quality's not real good of it, so it's going to get on. I'll put it in a protecto sleeve, and I'll put it in my little binder over there of collectible autographs, but uh, there he is, hanging out with Gizmo. Yeah, watching some tube. That's what I look like at night, yeah. Anyway. Zach Galligan, really nice guy to meet, uh, kind of a quiet fellow, just really nice, but kind of quiet, he'll answer your questions, but he was just kind of just there, and happy, I don't know, just one of those guys that just was there, you know, on the corner, uh, you can't go to a horror convention 
see there's it's sort of like prerequisite people you have to meet at horror conventions i've already learned after two conventions you have to meet kane hodder at some point if you haven't ever met him and another one to meet that does a lot of conventions nowadays is daniel harris young lady who signed a uh halloween i think it's a screenshot or a uh a photo taken from a portion of the Halloween 5 one sheet poster. This is the, one of the best 8x10 she had on her table. Um, she had some good quality 8x10s. Um, she signed at Tuberry, Daniel Harris, and big, big gigantic riding Jamie. She, of course, played Jamie Lloyd in uh, Halloween 4 and 5 and played Rob Zombie's Halloween 1 and 2. And uh, Urban Legend, The Last Boy Scout. She's done a lot of films, you know. She's actually directed a film. She had a little movie player on her table where she was letting people watch the trailer for her film. It's entitled Among Friends, if I remember correctly. I have no clue what this movie is about, guys. You'll have to go uh, just uh, YouTube Among Friends and get the trailer up. You, you, you decide what type of movie it is. It looked like an L.A. drug thriller to me. I don't really know how else to put it, but it looked interesting. don't know. She said it might be out next spring. Anyway, Daniel Harris, a little 8 by 10 there, framed up pretty nice. Uh, find a little spot for it in the sacred man cave at some point. Here's one that was probably one of the most interesting people to, to meet at uh, Scarefest this time around. I know him, he's most widely known as the Mohawk crazy uh, biker guy from Mad Max 2, the Road Warrior. His name is Vernon Wells. Um, he's also really well known for being uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger's nemesis in Commando, where he was the guy that con uh, kidnapped Melissa, Alyssa Milano, his daughter, in the movie. Anyway, I got a screen, a really high quality, glossy uh, 8x10 from him. Vernon signed it. His, uh, there he is in his uh, Road Warrior garb there. Uh, Barry, uh, you can run, but you can't hide. That's a fam famous line from the movie where he's talking to Mel Gibson. He goes, You can run, but you can't hide. He's just going crazy and wild and stuff. Signed at Vernon Wells, Wes, Mad Max 2. I thought that was really cool. It framed up pretty good, too. And you notice it's got some widescreen black bars at the top and bottom. He told me a little story. He was really interesting. He offered a story about where he got this actual, this reproduction photo. The reason why for the, the widescreen bars on here is because this came from an actual uh, slice, a 35mm slice of the one of the original prints of Mad Max 2, the Road Warrior. Uh, he got it sent to him in the mail by a little Japanese girl who was a fan of his. Her father ran a theater in Japan where they were running the movie. She sent him a piece of that and he saved that ever since. And every time he goes on the road and does a production tour or something like this, makes an appearance, he brings these. He brings this shot with him and in with his other shots as well. And I said, man, that's the one I've definitely got to have because after that kind of story, I was like, well, Vernon, that was very interesting. I've got to have, I've got to have this one. Plus it was really cool because that's, that's one of the main roles I remember him for. And, like I said, lot, he wasn't really one of the most popular guys there, but he had a steady line the whole time because once you figured out who he was, people were like just dying at the chance to get over to meet Vernon Wells. So good 80s, you know, good 80s one to put on the put on the desk or the wall there. Had to have it. Here's my little mini poster haul. I brought a bunch of mini posters I showed you in a prior video, little 11 by 17s. I didn't find any 11 set by 17 uh Poster frames over at the local Wally Mart, they had them, but they sold out of them. But I found these more inexpensive ones, these uh, piece, it, piece it together yourself kind. They're a little bit bigger, but uh, I don't know. I, I thought they turned out pretty good. I mean, I'm not a pro at doing framing myself. I'm kind of a real novice at it, but uh, got the first one here. I got my Texas Chainsaw Massacre mini poster signed by uh, old Grandpa himself. He said, uh, to Barry, here's sucking at you. John Dugan, Grandpa. Anyway, I had to get him to sign that. And it looks a little weird because I've got my uh, the little 4x6 photo that I got recently in an autograph video, if you've watched. It says, Barry, you're next, Gunnar Hansen. So I've got, I put them, I feel right to put them in there together. I got Grandpa and uh, Leatherface on my Texas Chainsaw Massacre collection poster frame here. Hopefully one day, old uh, Ed, Ed Neal or Edwin Neal will do a, the hitchhiker guy will do a, a convention and I'll get him in there too. Because, you know, if he's there, he'll say it's a good picture. You can pay me now. You know, yeah, I'm sorry, I had to do that. You know, whenever you're talking about the hitchhiker, you know. He makes head cheese. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to watch Texas Chainsaw Massacre now. I'm already getting excited about it. Let's put this right here. And let's get to the next one. Let's put that over there. And of course, Bill Mosley was in attendance. I had to get him because I hadn't met Bill Mosley before either. I'm still kind of new to the conventions. It's all my second one, so... 
Bill's another kind of staple of conventions. When he's not doing a movie, he's doing conventions. And you just get a feel like he really enjoys it. So, really nice guy. And, and let me, before I get too far into Bill Mosley, John Dugan, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. He was kind of a trip to talk to, but really, really nice. He'll answer any questions. He used to tell me that he was in the makeup for 28 hours and all this other stuff. And I actually got to see him when he was a little bit, a uh, uh, couple drinks in him the next day when I went back with Pizel to get Pizel's autograph and help him with his camera and everything. I, I, I like to think he probably had about three whiskey sours before he sat down at his booth. And he was really uh, the same, but different that day. I'll just say it that way. Anyway, Texas Chainsaw 2 mini poster. Signed by Bill Mosley. Uh, Bill's really, he's really a high, highly educated fellow. He was educated at Yale, Ivy League school, and I've, I've researched that. And he's really well-spoken, well-versed guy whenever you meet him in person. He's nothing like Chop Top or uh, Otis Driftwood or any of these other people he's played in movies. He's not real wild. You know, he's kind of soft-spoken like almost. But uh, he says, oh, uh, oh, good to meet you, Barry. Good to meet you. Uh, would you like a famous line on your poster? Maybe like, uh, lick my plate or dog will hunt or anything like that. I said, uh, Bill, I'm glad you brought that up, sir, because my all-time favorite line is, that's my sweet meat. When you slap on that guy and say, that's my sweet meat. He says, oh, that's excellent. That's a great one, too. That's a good one. Anyway, he signed it to Barry. That's my sweet meat, Bill Mosley. There you have it. Chop Top himself. Lick my plate, you dog dick. Sorry. Every time you talk about Bill Mosley, I have to, that's ceremonial. You have to do that. Uh, I don't know. It's strange. Think strange things happen in a man cave, especially after you get back from a convention. Here's a uh, zombie movie that's close to my heart. Probably pound for pound in my top three zombie movies of all time. They had three cast members from Return of the Living Dead at this convention. Don Calfa, Beverly Randolph, and the one, the only, Linnea Quigley, who played Trash in the movie. I, the money was running kind of short, so I just decided to just get Linnea, because she's kind of the one you want to get. I'm not, nothing bad on Don Calfa, Ernie, and uh, you know a few of the others has been at conventions, but... You gotta get Linnea. I mean, if she's there, you gotta return Living Dead poster poster with you. Go ahead and get it. Here we go. Uh, return Living Dead uh, mini poster. Signed. She signed mine way up here in the corner. She put uh, to Barry. I like it spooky. Uh, love Linnea. L love Linnea. Heart uh, trash. She says she always puts the heart to let you know that it was actually her. So if you wonder about a uh, eBay autograph from her, look for the heart. I don't know. I hope somebody knows that. But anyway. I like this poster. I've always loved the original poster art from uh, Turn Living Dead. So it's going to make a good addition to the old man cave wall. It's becoming a chamber for 80s films for some odd reason. I didn't really plan it that way, but sad to say a lot of the good films came out of the 80s it's, that I like. So anyways, here's probably pound for pound this trip. The most fun autograph and one of the cheaper ones. She didn't charge but ten dollars. Probably I'm doing part that I had my own poster with me, or it being Friday when I got it. Very very fun to talk to. Very down to earth. Very vibrant. Very fun person. You act. You really knew it in your heart that she was having a great time at the convention, and she liked being there. So I'm hoping she'll come back to other conventions because I might even get her to sign something else. She was there with her co-star from the movie, the '80s slasher classic Sleepaway Camp. Uh, I only got Angela. Like I said, I, my money ran a little short the second day. I, they had Jonathan Tierston there, her co-star from the movie as well. I didn't get Jonathan Tierston to sign mine, but I did get Angela to sign it. Or uh, Her character name was Angela. Uh, Felissa Rose to sign it. Uh, she was just really nice person. Felissa just took the time. She asked me where I came from. So I just literally drove in from North Carolina. and She said, oh my gosh, you've been on the road for a few hours. I said, yeah, I'm a little road weary, but I'm having fun. So... And she was the first one I went to, and she was just, she was just really having a great time. That's the best way I can. I'm just gonna leave it at that. She said to Barry, "Meet me, uh, meet me at the waterfront after the social. Lots of love, Felissa Rose XOXO." Um, if you've never seen Sleepaway Camp, uh, and, you know, if you're in the '80s horror, you need to see it. It's just one of those really wild slasher movies. Um, you know, that's the famous line she says right before the big reveal, the big scene the movie's famous for at the end of the movie. So, I, mean, I thought it framed up pretty good. It's definitely going on the man cave wall because it's a tribute to 80s horror around here still, too. So, Anyway, Felissa Rose, Sleepaway Camp. I like the way that one framed up, too. It looks really nice. It's very nice. Very nice, as Cartman would say. Very nice. Let's see. Let's put this right here. I'm running out of room over here. The man cave is a very small room. 
Last but not least, probably the main, one of the main reasons I went to this show was to meet Lance Henriksen. Uh, some people know him as Bishop from Aliens. Other people know him as uh, Frank Black from Millennium TV Show. They've seen him in Stone Cold the biker, as the main biker. This guy's like a chameleon. He played Jesse Hooker in uh, Near Dark. He played a vampire. This guy's been around the campfire for decades. He's a, he's a chameleon. He really becomes his roles. And I've always been a fan of his acting abilities and skills. And he really gets into his roles. Very, very nice to his fans. He took his time with me. He, I asked him about his future projects. He said he's starring in some kind of a, if I'm not wrong, a, some kind of a submarine movie, possibly coming out within the next year or so. So he played a supporting role, he said. So look for him to do that. Uh, look for him in that type of role soon. I figured the safe choice, I did have a pumpkin head poster, but the more I stared at it before I went to Scarefest, it was cheesy looking. I didn't like the quality of it too. So I got on Amazon again and I got an Aliens poster. I love Aliens. It's one of the best sci-fi action horror movies ever made. So I think it was a safe choice. I got Lance Henderson to sign my mini Aliens poster. It says, uh, To Barry, Lance Henderson, Bishop. Underneath there. Uh, I told a few YouTubers before I went up there, I was dying to ask him if he really, in fact, had white synthetic uh, android blood or if he still had a mind link to demons, uh, you know, i.e. pumpkin head. But uh, I declined to do that because for fear of him calling security on me or something of that nature. So anyway, Aliens, Lance Hendrickson, probably the uh, one of the main draws to go up there for it. So anyway, guys, that is it for the autograph and the swag haul. I got a whole bunch of stuff. Like I said, I got really lucky on Friday and the money just stretched further. And on the second day, I think towards the end of the day on Saturday, the uh, DVD convention DVD uh, tables, they were starting to mark their DVDs down. So I got those three for 20, which is still too much for what they are, but still, I don't know. I figured they're not coming out for a while. I thought I'd get them. Anyway, that has been the recap, Scarefest haul. I really enjoyed it. I know this video is super long, but I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Look for more Scarefest tour. Uh, footage and uh, a tour of Celebrity Row, show you who was there, Elvira was there, and uh, I might do another subsequent video to tell you why or why not I didn't get other autographs from other people that were in attendance. One of which, the money ran out, but another one was I had to pick and choose, and anyway, I'll tell you about that another day. Rock on, guys. Take care. See you next time.